Hugh Hefner died today. Expect a lot of stories about how he was a maverick in publishing, an icon and lists of his achievements. But most will ignore the negative side of his empire and his life. Why do we do that when someone dies? If you ask me yesterday what I thought of him, I would have simply said I thought he was a sexist misogynist who profited by exploiting women professionally and personally. Today I just make that statement past tense. Why should I have a different opinion today? I'm not dancing on his grave. I really don't care enough to do that. Let's look at his Playboy empire. Hefner made his money and reached peak international fame by marketing women as Playboy bunnies. In an interview in 1967, Hefner explained why he chose bunnies. The bunny has a sexual meaning, he said, because it's a fresh animal, shy, vivacious, jumping, sexy. First it smells you, then it escapes, then it comes back, and you feel like caressing it, playing with it. A girl resembles a bunny. Joyful, joking. Excuse me while I gag. In 1963, Gloria Steinem went undercover as a bunny in a New York Playboy club. She claims female employees were barred from dating customers but encouraged to go out with Playboy executives and all bunnies had to remain within five pounds of their hiring weight and there were strict rules about how they should stand, sit and smoke. In these early days, each female employee also had to undergo a complete physical, including an internal examination and smear test, before starting work. Personally Hefner bragged of sleeping with thousands of women. Men held him up as someone to admire and claimed he lived the perfect male fantasy life. Today his son, Cooper, tweeted about his dad saying his father lived an exceptional and impactful life and credited him for advocating free speech, civil rights and sexual freedom. Well, male sexual freedom perhaps. In her book, Down the Rabbit Hole, Hefner's former girlfriend Holly Madison spoke openly about Hefner fostering competition and body image issues between his multiple live-in girlfriends. He would take photos of them each night and compare their bodies. They had to conform and dress and look a certain way if they wanted to stay in the mansion. She said Hefner offered her a quadalute out of a crumpled tissue on her first night out clubbing with him. When she told him she doesn't do drugs, she says Hef replied, usually I don't approve of drugs, but you know, in the 70s they used to call these pills thigh openers. But hey, apparently, those Playboy Mansion parties were legendary. British twins Carla and Melissa Howe, who dated Hefner a few years ago claim, we've heard stories about him having 16 girls in the grotto and once he'd finished they would be passed on to the next man there. Several other bunnies alleged they had been raped by Hefner's close friend Bill Cosby, who faced dozens of such allegations. Hefner issued a statement in late 2014 he would never tolerate this behavior. 
But two years later, former bunny Chloe Goines sued Cosby and Hefner for sexual battery, gender violence and other charges over an alleged 2008 rape. In her autobiography, Ordeal, Linda Lovelace claims she was expected to preform bestiality for Hefner as it allegedly was one of his fetishes. I have had a few friends go to parties at the Playboy Mansion and they said it was a sad, worn-out place that smelt like bleach. Hell knows, no one felt their immune system was strong enough to jump in the spa unscathed. So, while I acknowledge Hefner created an iconic brand, I ask is his life one we want to be celebrating? I won't be put putting out black bunny ears in honor of Hugh Hefner tonight. <laughs>